Hey guys, and welcome back to Pure Heart. Chris here, as usual, back again with another album review. And guys, as always, leave a like on this video, and also comment down below what you guys thought about this album, and also, if you're new here or a return visitor and you haven't yet subscribed, then maybe hit that subscribe button, it really helps out this channel, but let's uh, get into it. To Love a Fool is the latest album by the worship singer for Bethel Music, and that is Corey Asbury, or for what a lot of people may have known him as, the songwriter for the song Reckless Love. A few people may have heard it here or there. It was also featured on the latest Bethel album, which if you guys have not seen my review of that, I may talk about him or not. I know I talk about Bethel. Uh, so to get into the start of this album, this is probably stronger than his uh, Reckless Love album. But however, just like with the Reckless Love album, there's not many upbeat songs on it here. Like really the only upbeat song is the first two, which is Sparrow and Canyons. But then again, those aren't really upbeat songs it's just compared to the rest of the album they're upbeat songs so if you guys are looking for that of really upbeat type of worship he's not really the best person for that and if we're gonna go along the lines of this more slower type of worship uh, out of the other albums I've listened to and reviewed this is not the best or the one that I keep on drawing myself to there is a, some really great songs you know just starting with the good of him that's First starting off with the first one with Canyons, I actually really enjoyed that song just the way that it gets you an understanding that, hey, this album is really about what the title track is actually saying about, which is saying to love a fool, and it's just of how God loves us so much. It's a very simple message for any album. This feels like it's an extension off of Reckless Love, especially with the song The Prodigal Son, which just feels like reckless love in a sense, but stronger, which is very weird. It's like a sequel to the song. It's basically the Empire Strikes Back of reckless love. So if reckless love was a new hope, the prodigal song is Empire Strikes Back. But however, even though that that song is really good, really the best song off this album is Unraveling. It's a very personal song. Uh, all these songs are very personal, but that one for me, uh, and maybe for a lot of other people that listen to that song, it, it just hit that little mark just a little bit more and was very simple. It's one of those songs that is definitely a recommend listening to. Just the way that this song actually has an orchestra behind it and it just builds and builds and it has a very nice uh, way for the way that the whole album is, is really structured. I believe that Corey Asbury at his best, uh, including with Reckless Love, is better if it's acoustic. Uh, and that song would be fantastic as acoustic. In fact, this entire album would be better if it was an acoustic type of album. Now, saying that the music style that was had was bad, it just felt like, okay, I felt like you could just do this a little bit better if you did do a little bit more acoustic rather than radio friendly. Like it doesn't have a type of voice to a lot of these uh, songs, whereas granted for acoustic version, that doesn't really have a very much voice type either. It doesn't have that more popish sound. Uh, some of the songs I actually skipped. The song Crashing In, Nothing More Than You, and also I'm Sorry and Faithful Wounds. They were great songs. Uh, the lyrics were fantastic. I just felt like the, with the music direction that it went in was just not the appropriate music direction for it. Again, a lot of these songs could just be better if they were acoustic or if they just were tightened down just a little bit more, get off a little bit of the mess within there. And also of how some of these songs just ended, uh, for example, Canyons ended with a saxophone, which is very nice for the way that a song to end with a saxophone piece. Uh, Dear God ended with this guitar solo. It's that part where they just extend it because, hey, this sounds nice. Is it necessary? Maybe not. And honestly, the song The Father's House is really what wraps up this album together in a nice little bow, which I really, really enjoy. It made me enjoy The Father's House 
way more and it made me enjoy this album a whole lot more because at the end the father's house still told this story and it was great and it just you know alluded to what he was saying in the previous songs but it also just added a fresh new beat to the entire album so overall i'm gonna have to give this album a four out of five praise Hunts. An album that is a very heartfelt album from Corey Asbury. I didn't enjoy it as much as some of the slower worship type of albums that we have been getting a lot lately. However, it is a good album. You know, you're going to uh, obviously find your favorite song. Uh, my favorite song off of this was Unraveling and also Canyons. Every other song was good. Anyway, if you guys would leave a like onto this video and also comment down below what you guys thought about this album and also what you guys want me to review, whether it be in the past, in the future, or whatever it may be, you guys put it down in those comments and I will review it. I will talk about it. It can be music, movies, a topic, whatever it may be. You guys put it down in those comments down below and it really helps out this channel. And also, if you're new here or a return visitor and you haven't yet subscribed, then maybe hit that subscribe button. It really helps out this channel. But with that, be the light, know that you matter, and know that God loves you. Bye.